Morgan, the San Antonio Marriage Initiative, and I'm so delighted to introduce Anne and Dave Wilson to you today. You may have heard them on Family Life Today's radio show and podcast. They've been on 700 episodes and took over as co-hosts three years ago. They've also been speakers at Family Life's Weekend to Remember retreat for 32 years. They've been married 41 years themselves with three sons and six grandchildren. They co-founded a multi-campus megachurch in the Detroit area, and Dave served as a chaplain for the Detroit Lions NFL football team for 33 years. Thank you guys so much for being here. It is great to be here. Yeah, we're excited to be with you. You didn't, you didn't have to add the uh, chaplain part because we didn't win anything. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, we did. We won souls to Jesus. We won souls to Jesus. That is true. You sure did. And you had some great stories to tell about that. Um, I, I do want to hear about those, but man, you have quite a resume. And I wanted to talk about your work with Family Life first. How did you get started with that? You took you had some big shoes to fill with Family Life Today podcast and radio show. Oh, yeah. When we walked in that studio day one, we both got on our knees. Nobody was there. Yeah. Um, uh, Dennis Rainey, the president had just, uh, you know, succeeded out and Bob, his co-host was still there for a couple of years with us, but I mean, we had no business being there. This was a miracle of God that they chose us and asked us to do it. And yeah, you talk about big shoes, only God could do it. And here we are, like you said, 700 episodes later, we're still there. I think we, there's, there's a beauty to doing something and stepping out when you feel like you cannot do it yeah. and the only power that you have is the power of the Holy Spirit living within you because you're so needy. Like, Jesus, we have to have you do this through us because we can't do it in and of ourselves. Well, I must confess, I listened to one of your podcasts just last week as I was running, and I heard the story that you were telling. It was based on some of your marriage ministry. Uh, Dave, I think you were speaking, you and we, we talked about it before, but you were um, speaking to a mops group, and you had a surprise for Anne. Can you talk a little <laughs> bit about that, that context of your ministry and marriage, kind of where you were, and then include that story, because I think it's such an important one for people to hear. That's a good word. You had a surprise for me. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, I don't know exactly what year of marriage it was. I think it's, it was around 15, actually. So that means we had little boys in the home. I don't know how old. Yeah, maybe. they were young. You yeah, know, under 10 years old, probably. And Ann was actually asked to speak to the mothers of preschoolers. And she invited me to join her I'm last like, minute. Like, the, hey, you want to come? The women will love this. You're the pastor. They're going to love hearing from you. And he's like, yeah, I'm glad to do that. And I even said, like, what do you what do you think we should talk about? He goes, I don't know. Let's just get up there and wing it and just kind of get down and just tell them what's going on. So then Dave gets all animated and. <laughs> He shares some things that I had never heard him share. He goes, women, I don't know if you get this, but, but as little boys, we usually have someone as little kids just cheering for us, usually a mom or a dad or grandparents are like, oh, good job. You know, it, like they're cheering. They love us. They're so they're, they're cheering for us. So then as we get older and the boys get older, we get into school and we kind of find our what we're good at. So it's, it could be sports or music or school, but then it's a coach or a teacher or someone cheering us again, like, you're good at this. You're really good. And then Dave says, you know, and I was a college quarterback. So on Saturdays, I have people cheering for me. And I mm -hmm. had never heard him share any of this. Like, oh, this is interesting. I've never even considered this or thought of it. And then he says, and by the way, basically, then I meet Anne and she says, I choose you, Dave Wilson, because you're the man and Anne is cheering for me. And I'm like, wow, I've never even considered that. And then he says, and he kind of leans in tight to these women. He goes, and then you know what happens? We get married and we walk in the door after a long day. And all we hear is boo, boo. And I'm sitting here in the chair like, what? What are you talking about? And he looks at me, and you can go on from there. I mean, uh, I knew right then it's like, oh, boy, this is going to be a long, long trip home. Because I had never said this. Actually, I'd never said it to anybody. As Ever. I was saying it out loud to the Mops group, 
it just felt like, wow, this is exactly how it feels. It feels like I get cheered everywhere else. I come home, I get critiqued. You know, I don't literally, she doesn't literally boo me, but you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a good husband, I'm not a good dad. I don't do this, I don't do that. And so that's what it felt like. So, so on the way home, I say to him, like, what was that? And he goes, I don't know, it just came out. And I said, so you- I actually said that was God. God <laughs> was speaking through me. <laughs> I said, so you feel like I boo you? And he said, yeah. And just as Dave said, I feel like I can't do anything right. I feel like you want to tweak me all the time or fix me, or I'm not doing this right or that right. And I don't pray enough. And I'm not leading spiritually enough. And, and, and I was appalled. I'm like, are you kidding? Like, I- am helping you and i said everybody thinks you're amazing and they're cheering for you but man i see all of it and, and i'm thinking that's motivating you she said she was uh my holy spirit no i said i'm helping the holy spirit i think she said she was the holy spirit <laughs> i think there was some contention about that in the, in the, in the podcast well i ended up going home i got on my knees and i was angry and I realized, man, my my words are not life giving. They really were critiquing a lot. And so I was asking God and it took me quite a while to change that. But it took me a while to change that and to really start speaking life and life words and encouragement. And not that I don't speak the truth. I, I can't seem to not. I can't seem to help that. Um, but I would go to God and say, God, this was this was so hard for me, especially as a verbal processor. God, should I say anything? And if he said yes, Lord, if I should say something, how should I say it? And when should I say it? That changed our marriage, I feel like. Yeah, and all, all I can say, that was over 20 some years ago. She started speaking life, uh, in a sense, cheering me. I'm not kidding. And again, it didn't happen in a day or a week, but over time, she started to speak you know, life, like you're a good husband, you're a good dad, I believe in you, I trust you. I'm telling you, Amy, it totally changed me as a man. I don't know if women understand how we men long to be affirmed. We're like little boys, really, in these man shells, but we're very insecure. And so when somebody praises us, man, I was running home after that. I wanted to get home before I'd be at the office. I'd stay there because that's where people were saying i was good but when i came home i didn't hear that so i didn't know i was doing this but i really was spending too much time away from home i started running home and i tell you every wife wants her man to run home and i tell you when you start to praise him believe in him we rise up to become the man you're praising to say we are and i i'm just the way we're wired i'm sure women are the same way everybody loves affirmation but it it literally changed our marriage i had women say to me uh so you want me to fake it am i supposed to be an actress because <laughs> some people have said i don't see anything to cheer about and we can get in those ruts you know it's funny how we can start just seeing the negative and there are good things but we stop seeing we stop looking and i usually tell those women you married him because he had some great traits you might have to go back to those and isn't it good that we have a God that does cheer for us? He speaks life into us. I think so often we're filled with shame or regret. And God wants to take us out of those places so that we become a movement and a people that give life, that speak life. And we say the things that Jesus would say. And we treat people the way he would treat them. Well, and I just think that was such an important example. Because I think it really rings true if you think about it and it's a really small thing that that could really make a big difference it wasn't the only epiphany you guys had in your marriage i know you've written some of your story in your book vertical marriage that talks about how you know it's really god that helps heal a marriage so do you want to talk a little bit about your book and and maybe then some of your story and how you got there yeah i would say you know vertical marriage our book was a book we never thought we would write and we never thought we'd tell the story of, of, of what vertical marriage means. And it's a long story, so I'll keep it short. And but it's horrible. Yeah, I mean, it was a dark moment in our marriage that, you know, when we're in that moment, I thought, this is a story that no one will hear. They don't need to hear it. This is, we, we're in trouble. And it was, long story short, 10 year anniversary. We're getting ready to start our church. I've been the Detroit Lions chaplain for five years. and. 
basically, we go on a 10 year anniversary date. I think we're doing great as we uh, head home. We go parking just to hang out and park and pray over uh, this church. We're going to start at this little middle school. We actually parked in the middle school parking lot. All I can tell you is this. I go to kiss Anne. She doesn't want to kiss me. I try again. She doesn't want to kiss me. I ask her, is anything wrong? And listen to this. She says, well, to be honest, I've lost my feelings for you. I think we're a 10 out of 10. She tells me we're in trouble. I had no idea. <laughs> you know, I would have said we're a 0.5. And the fact that he thought we were 10 just summed up our whole relationship, I felt like. And so we've been fighting for quite a while, like over a year. And marriages go through peaks and valleys. But this valley had been lasting for a long time. And a lot of it had to do with our schedule. Um, we, were, we, were really, we were really walking this dream of what God had given us to start this church. But Dave, I had a four-year-old and a two-year-old. I felt like he was gone almost every night of the week. He's living the dream, and I'm back home thinking, why am I doing everything? I'll live that dream, too. So I found myself being really resentful, telling Dave, like, I feel like you're not home. And then I was yelling, you're never home. And then I was really yelling, like, I hope our kids even remember who you are. And so my resent I started out angry. My, resent my anger turned to resentment. And after a while, I was just bitter and then numb. I had nothing. And I, I felt so bad because Dave had really put on this great anniversary evening. But I said, Dave, I've got nothing. I, I, don't, I don't think we're doing well. And I'm at the point, I don't even care that we're not doing well. And, and the miracle of the evening is as Anne's sharing that, I hear God speak to me. Uh, not an audible voice, just the Holy Spirit that lives within me pretty loudly said, uh, shut up. So in that moment that uh, what repent meant was I was sort of lukewarm in my walk. I was just doing ministry, but I sort of left who I was doing ministry for God behind. And um, repent was like, if you think you're going to fix your marriage just horizontally, that's not what's going to happen. Unless you get me back in control in first place in your life, this doesn't have a chance. So it's really, that's what vertical means. It's like, you got to find your life where you know your life is. And by the way, we were traveling around the country speaking about marriage and telling couples this, and yet I wasn't doing it. So again, long story short, I ended the night by getting on my knees in the front seat of a Honda Accord. I don't know how to this day I did that, but I felt like I needed to be on my knees and I repented and said, God, I am not the husband and dad you've called me to be. And it's because I don't have you in first place. And I repent and I put you back in control and I ask you to make me the husband that my wife longs for and the dad my kids need. And I said, amen. I'm like, okay, now we got to talk. And I look over and Anne's on her knees. Well, and if you would have asked me that night, what's the problem with your marriage? I would have said, he is. My <laughs> husband is the problem. And it was so interesting that, first of all, Dave didn't respond in anger. I love scripture, how practical it is when it says a gentle answer turns away wrath. And so when he responded in this humble, repentant way, I felt super convicted and I felt like God was whispering in my ear through the Holy Spirit. I felt like he was saying, Ann Wilson, you have been trying to find your life, your joy and your happiness through Dave. He was never made and I never equipped him to fill all your needs. That's my job. And so I got on my knees in the car and I repented because I think what I did was I made Dave and my marriage the idol thinking I would be happy if our marriage was good. And I'm telling you, that's not why God instituted marriage. I think when we go vertical and put him first, then we can, we can be side by side and fulfill what he's called us to do. It's not this fairy tale romantic balcony all the time. We're in a war zone fighting for the sake of our marriage and our families and our kids. And that's where Satan wants to enter. So for us, that was a key, a key time in our marriage. But then it took a while. I would like to say my marriage, my feelings came right back. But we really had to change some things and implement some new things in our relationship. Because it took a while for those feelings to come back and for us to feel like, oh, we've, we're back, you know? Well, I know you mentioned the power 
I mean, you did just in the story too, but also as I've heard you speak and, and write, the power of praying together and the husband even taking that leadership and what a connection that creates. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, you know, one of the questions we uh, get the most about vertical marriage is, okay, so you had this moment in your car on your 10-year anniversary and God sort of met you there and did a miracle. Did it all change in one day or one week? No, like Ann said, going vertical is a daily deal. And so we've told a lot of couples, in fact, even online, couples will direct message us and ask this question. And we said, here's how you can go vertical daily. We said there's a weekly, a daily, a weekly, and an annual sort of rhythm you should try and build into your marriage. I actually got it from Rick Warren who talked about how do you connect with God? He said, divert daily, withdraw weekly, abandon annually. There's a preacher for you. D-D-W-W-A-A. -A. Divert daily, withdraw weekly, abandon annually. And so as we thought about that, that's like, okay, if I want to walk with God every day, I'm going to divert. I'm going to pull away from my schedule and, and spend time with, with Jesus. I'm going to I'm going to Sabbath each week. I'm going to withdraw and, and rest. And then once a year or more, I'm going to get away and refresh my spiritual life. Well, the same thing's true in your marriage. It's like, what would it be like to go vertical as a couple, not just individually? So we just took that rhythm and said, okay, how about this? And I'll tell you, if you're listening and you've never done this, this will change your marriage right here. Pray together, husband and wife, daily. And it doesn't have to be long. Like, it can be five minutes. It can be three minutes. But I don't think there's anything quite as intimate as praying together. I mean, like we have physical intimacy, which is beautiful, and that's really intimate. But there's a connection that happens when you pray together. I think it's hard because the enemy doesn't want us to do it. And it's hard to do when you don't like each other or you're mad. But there's yeah. something about just holding hands or even if your spouse falls asleep and they are against praying, for you to put your hand on them and just say, God, thank you for my husband or my wife. We need you. We need your help. We pray for protection over our family, over our marriage. Guide us. It could be that quick, you know, but why don't we do that? Yeah. And so we would say pray daily, withdraw weekly. We would say date weekly. So figure out a way to get away once a week. And again, it's not a legalistic law. But man, if you can get away for breakfast or, or dinner, whatever, pull yourself away, get a sitter. Your marriage needs that and have a couple fun. hours. Put energy into your marriage. And then once a year, we say retreat annually. Go to a family life weekend to remember. Go to a vertical marriage weekend. Go to your churches, whatever. Go to Mexico. Any, <laughs> any way you can get away and pour energy into the most important relationship in your life. And I tell you what, we do these our vertical marriage conferences around the country, and couples will come up and say, you know, we haven't done this in 20 years we're so glad we're here that's good right we're like no that's not good you need to do this every year well we're glad they came. we're glad they're there but yeah i mean it's something you've got to build into a rhythm i mean guys go on golf trips every year you can go on a marriage trip and work <laughs> on your marriage well i can definitely see why you guys have been such popular speakers at the weekend to remember retreats for 32 years any key takeaways or highlights from those that you'd like to share i mean you've already given us so many great thoughts from vertical marriage and uh your own insights but any any memories yeah i mean one comes up really quickly because it wasn't too long ago this doesn't happen at every conference but man when this happens you're like god is on the move you know we, we always say aslan is on the move it this guy we were speaking in hershey pennsylvania a couple years ago before covid and this guy comes up right before my last talk on sunday morning when we send the couples home and uh there's like two minutes on the timer before i'm supposed to start and he literally walks up to me i'm on stage i haven't seen him all weekend i haven't talked to him He's one of about 15, 2,000 people there. It was a big conference. And he goes, hey, dude, rip up my divorce papers. And I go, what? He goes, these are my divorce papers. We're going to the attorney tomorrow, Monday. We're not going. I, I need you to rip these up. And so I jump off the stage. And I go, you can't just ask me to rip up your divorce papers. You got to tell me your story in one minute and 10 seconds. So he basically says, my wife dragged me here Friday night. I told her I'll go Friday night. I'm not going back Saturday. I don't want to go to the stupid marriage conference. I don't want to hear some perfect couple get up there and tell us how to have their have a perfect marriage from their perfect marriage. So I'll go Friday night and then we're going home. So he said, I came Friday night. You and Ann get up there and you start sharing how 
you struggle in your marriage and you fight like everybody else and how, you know, he goes, I turn to my wife after Friday night. And I go, wow, our marriage is better than theirs. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, I'll go back tomorrow. So he came back Saturday and Sunday and he said, you know, yesterday you shared with us the difference in your marriage is Jesus. And I gave my life to Jesus yesterday morning. And we're going to go home and try this thing now with Jesus as our foundation. So I'm not going to the attorney. I need you to rip up these divorce papers. And I said, dude, we're ripping these up together. So he ripped them up and I ripped them up. I actually have a fragment of those in my briefcase that I carry everywhere I go. I mean, it's just one story, but God meets us where we are. And it doesn't matter where you are right now or where you've been or how bad it is. God can do a miracle. And he does but you got to surrender. You got to turn it all over and let him take over and he can do what we can only dream about. Well, that was a Holy Spirit moment right there because I hadn't asked you that before. I hadn't heard that story. Yeah. And that is, I mean, that's everything you'd, you would hope for. I, I mean, yeah. I was like better than Dave Ramsey's, you know, yell of being debt free. <laughs> that's yeah, the divorce. <laughs> you should frame that little piece that, that, that's oh, right. I, you know, you're right. I really should. Yeah. I carry it around the country, but I'm going to, you're right. I'm going to put it in a frame. That's a good idea. You should. Well, I know you had some, some stories about your times with the, with the Detroit Lions as the chaplaincy. Can you give us a little peek? I mean, it's, it's football season. Can you give us a little peek of what that was like? Mm -hmm. And I know, Anne, you were involved as well with the wives. Yeah, it's an interesting, it's a really interesting ministry because you have these young men who are at the peak of their lives, really, in terms of what they're doing, um, how much money they're making, they're living the dream. And I don't think very many people consider that they're married. I mean, the wives that they marry are intelligent, gifted, smart. Like so many of them had double degrees. They have law degrees. Some are going to med school. There is one of them right now that was in the Olympics. These are talented, amazing women. And yet they come into a city, they, they kind of drop, many of them drop everything they've been doing to follow their guys into a new city, to a place that they've never been, to people they've never, they don't even know anybody. And so many times they would come to my Bible study, not knowing anyone, maybe not even being spiritually minded, but they need friends and they need people that are living this life. It was and has been, I, I did it for 35 years. I did it after Dave was gone one of the most fulfilling and amazing ministries for me because these women became my friends, but they also saw that like, I have everything that I've wanted and I still have this emptiness. So many women gave their lives to Jesus and that also then impacted their husbands because that career as glamorous as it is, there's a lot of insecurity, not knowing, will I get hurt? Will I be cut? Will I be in a new team tomorrow? Is my career over? And it can be over in an instant with an injury. And we did share this one funny story because this one wife was coming and she's a new Christian. And by the way, Ann didn't say, but we had a weekly Bible study, a yeah. weekly couple study. I had a guy study. I mean, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes with a chaplain and an NFL team. Yeah. It really is. There was I this new it. wife. They were Go ahead. Dave mentioned that, you know, the, the Lions had kind of a, a streak there that was not so good. And I think their worst year, you had the most people come to Christ. Yeah, so we had, uh, yeah, actually the season before we went 0-16, which was obviously a historic moment in the NFL history, we saw 27, 28 guys come to Christ and get baptized. It was a revival. Yeah. And again, all the city, city of Detroit or the NFL knows is we didn't win games, but nobody knows the eternities that were changed and not just men and their wives, their kids, oh, you know, yeah. legacies were changed behind closed doors. Those are the kind of things that are going on in the NFL that nobody seems to hear about. And they're more important than a Super Bowl victory. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to make sure you had the opportunity to say that because that really was, yeah. was that really yeah. hit home with me. Now, and tell the cute story. I love this story. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the wives was at our Bible study and there, there could be anywhere from, um, 12 to 18 women in this study. And some of them are girlfriends, some of them are married. And, uh, this girl says, Hey, we're having our one year anniversary tonight. And 
everybody's like, that's cool. And in this study, we've been looking at our role as women of biblical godly women. What does that look like to be married, but have Jesus at the forefront of a marriage and how much he helps. And so she, I asked her at the end of the study and everybody was there. I said, well, what are you going to do? Like he's, she said, he's going to take me to the best restaurant. He's getting a limo. We're spending the night at the best hotel. And I said, you should do something special. Like, why don't you go, go get something that would be surprising to him and he would love it uh like some lingerie that you would feel comfortable in that would be fun that'd be a fun surprise and she said i don't know i've never done anything like that and i said it'd be so fun like be yourself like pick something that would be just you would feel great in and so she goes all right i'm gonna do that so she does that and the next day after they get back she calls me she goes ann this was the best night of our marriage so far I said, oh, good for you guys. That's so fun. She goes, no. My husband was like, what have you done? Where did you get this idea? You've never done anything like this. And she said, oh, well, we were talking about what it's like and how we bring God into our marriages and how important this area of physical intimacy is to God. Like this brings us closer. And he goes, at the Bible study, at the Bible study we did that, talked about it. And he goes, you got this idea from a Bible study? <laughs> And she goes, yeah. And he says to her, I want you to never miss one of those Bible studies. <laughs> and sure that. enough, this guy shows up at our couples study the next week. Yeah, he ended up giving his life to Christ several months later. And they're in full-time ministry today. It's a pretty amazing story. <laughs> and they have like, like six kids or something, right? Yeah. 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 All because of a nightgown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never know. Um, yep. I know. Well, I love it. It has been so wonderful to talk to you. I just feel like we we're just sitting on a couch together having a great conversation. But um, anyway, thank you so much for being here. It was just, just delightful. Thank you. And thank you for what's going on in your ministry and how you're impacting yeah. marriages and marriage champions. That is what this, this country needs. Yeah. Way you to are, go. You're in the trenches doing it. Well, and if you guys want to find any any more information about Dave and Ann and, and the things they're doing through family life or are there other endeavors, just just look for us at samwarage.org. Thank, Thank you. you. See, Bye -bye. See ya.